So let's take a little bit of a formal look at working with SQL Server instances. This is primarily just a lecture video, it won't be really too long. It's uh, hopefully I can, using this, impart to you when you would use instances, what purposes uh, they serve, and maybe clear up some licensing questions about them. So just to make sure that you understood what I was talking about in the last video, an instance of SQL Server is merely an installation of SQL Server. So if you have three instances of SQL Server on a machine, that means that you put the CD in three times and you ran through the setup three different times. Okay, there's three copies of SQL Server. There are three master databases, three model databases, three SA accounts, right? They compete for space. Now there's two types of instances. You can install a default instance, and we did that the first time I did the installation or you can install a named instance. Now a default installation, this is where the name of the SQL Server is the same as the name of the computer. If it's not, then it's a named instance. So I'll show you, we'll, we'll see some more of that uh, in the next video. Now typically you'll usually have one instance on a machine. You do not usually have more than one instance on a machine if we're looking at the world as a whole. Probably 90% or even higher of the SQL servers are single instance SQL servers. Now whether or not that that's a default instance, like if you ask me the question, do most people use a default or a named instance? Well, that's a little bit of a harder question to answer because some third parties will install named instances behind the scenes. That means that the user didn't actually do the installation of SQL Server. The application that you're installing, like Windows Small Business Accounting, uh, for example, Microsoft Small Business Accounting, it will install a SQL Server instance. Uh, Act by Sage Software will do that as well. And those are instances, they will be named instances there. Express Edition will install a named instance. So I can't really say that there are more defaults than named instances. I can't even say that I have a preference. Do you prefer a default or a name? I don't know. If I probably had to be pinned down, I'd say I, if I, I'm only going to install one instance on a machine, I tend to like that to be the actual default instance. But it, it's like, uh, I like that 51% and I like the named instances 49% of the time, right? So, not that strong either way. Now, uh, the other important thing to understand about instances is that they are in competition for one another. They don't recognize each other as, uh, hey, you're a SQL Server? Well, I'm a SQL Server too, let's party! No, it doesn't work like that. They see each other as rivals. So if you have two CPUs and one CPU, or, or rather one instance of SQL Server is consuming all of the CPUs, then the other, ser the other instance of SQL Server is going to have a real difficult time getting threads scheduled. So this CPU, memory, and disk space are what your instances will compete on. Now let's just talk about when it's appropriate for a single instance versus using a multiple instance. I have a couple of guidelines here. I wouldn't say these are hard and fast rules. Uh, I would say that you would use a single instance when you have a single machine and you want one location to do all of your security and management from. So all of your accounts and passwords and groups and things like that, you want them in one server. You want to be able to back up an entire server. Okay, that's when a single instance definitely is appropriate. Now what about in an environment where you have a user that needs to work with multiple databases. Okay, well it might be appropriate to put all those databases on one SQL Server. Remember that a SQL Server can have many, many different databases on it. So one instance of SQL Server could host a thousand different databases. It just depends on your hardware that you have set up. So if you want to make it easier on yourself, you want to create one account and have one account to administer, one server to administer, and you have users that have to use multiple databases, then it's fine. It's, it's ideal to use a single instance in that scenario. Now, if you also need that all of your databases are going to be on the same version and edition of SQL Server, then that's perfect. 
right? You've got one enterprise edition. You have 12 databases. You want them all to be on the same enterprise edition, the same version number, service pack one, the same minor and major version numbers, etc. This is what single instance machines are for. Now, multiple instance machines are for situations where you have two departments and their data needs to be completely segregated. Like it would be considered a, a breach of fiduciary duty if the finance department's databases were stored on the same server that the network administrators had access to and were able to browse and see everybody's salary information or customers' uh, information that they shouldn't be able to see. So in a case like that, you might want to create two instances and have two groups manage those instances. Maybe for server consolidation reasons, you don't want two separate servers. And so multiple instances allow for server consolidation. And it allows for you to say, hey, I will make the SA account for the network admins SQL server password one two three but then I'm gonna create let the finance group create a separate instance let them choose their own password and the network administrators will never be able to get into that SQL server now another one here that might seem a little bit odd uh, well the bottom two you might not really see well when would this be appropriate let me just show you here these bottom two uh, the databases needing to be on different versions or different editions of SQL server this is very common in test situations um, where I am a software vendor. I've written a new piece of software, and I want to test it on multiple copies of SQL Server. So I want to test it against SQL 2000, SQL 2005, SQL 2008. I want to test it across all the different service packs. And I want to be able to do my regression testing, or I want to go through some test case scenarios. This is what multiple instances are for, server consolidation. Instead of you having to have eight servers out there with each of them having a different version of SQL Server, you can now have one machine and have eight different instances, service pack one for, an up for one, service pack two for another. So it's great for testing. It's great for software vendors that need to install multiple uh, editions of SQL Server. Now, when we talk about the multiple instances, I did hint at this a little bit in that last section. You can mix the versions. So you can have 2000, 2005, 2008 all on the same machine. We can have different editions installed of SQL Server. And we can also mix between service packs and hotfixes. So there's, there's really no problem switching between these. You just simply have to connect to that particular instance. Now, there only can be one default instance, just so you know. And when you make a named instance, then that's a unique thing. Even across editions or versions, it still has to be a unique instance. The first character, there's a couple of rules here that you can look here. Um, I put no funny business at the bottom. You know, I tend to just make it alphanumeric and use capitalization for each word. Right. I tend to favor naming my instance names by their function, but you only have 16 characters, so you really don't have too much that you can, can work with. You can't get too excited. A couple of just minor things here towards the end of this. Enterprise Edition has up to 50 instances on one machine, and the others go up to 16. And the licensing has changed in case you're coming from 2005. Licensing in 2005 used to say that Enterprise Edition can have as many licenses or as many instances as you want, but Standard and Workgroup required a separate license for each instance. But not, to, not anymore today. If you have the Standard Edition license, you can have multiple instances uh, for that SQL Server. So it's really per operating environment today.